All right, welcome everyone. It looks like our participant numbers are even and out, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, welcome and happy first day of fall term. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, we're so excited to have you here and so excited to share all the plans um, our students have for fall term. Um, my name is Kelsey Elam Guiding, and I serve as the coordinator in the Center for the Fraternity and Sorority Life. Um, we will be recording this session and posting it afterwards for anyone that may um, have not been able to join us tonight, um, or if you want to go back and um, hear some of the information again. Um, so please be on the lookout for that email being sent out um, after this evening. Um, so like I said, um, my name is Kelsey and I'm the coordinator in the office. I'm one of three full-time staff members uh, that work day-to-day -day with the Fraternity and Free Life community here at Oregon State. We have an engaging and highly informative session for you tonight um, where you'll meet our staff and five student leaders from our community where they share their council's plans uh, for virtual recruitment um, this fall. But before we turn it over to the students, um, I'm gonna have you meet um, another one of our staff members, JP Peters. JP? Thank you, Kelsey. My name is JP Peters, and I'm the Associate Director for the Center for Fraternity and Sorority Life. Know that Oregon State Strong, oh, sorry, my video wasn't on. <laughs> know that Oregon State strongly values the relationship between our chapters and the university. We formalize this through the relationship statement that annually our groups work to execute every year. This document outlines the basic expectations for our chapters and also what OSU provides as support. Chapters meet criteria by attending events and hosting programs throughout the school year that further develop our members. If you'd like to learn more, you can refer to our page of five of our outline, or refer to the page with outline of publication and read more on the website at oregonstate.edu backslash CFSL. Uh, use the About Us tab and you can get more information. Now I'll pass it back to Kelsey. Thank you. Um, so like I said, today you're going to hear from our student leaders as they provide in-depth overviews of our community's plans for recruitment this fall and um, an overview of our community's history and values. Um, the presentation is about 20 minutes long and there will be lots of time for question and answer at the end. Uh, so on that note, please send us your questions down at the bottom of your screen. Um, you should see a little Q&A um, tab, go ahead and use that to um, enter your questions to be answered by our students later in the presentation. We'd love to hear from you and make sure uh, that we get every last question answered. Um, and at the end of the presentation today, we're going to have a giveaway. So if you registered for tonight's webinar prior to yesterday, September 22nd, by the end of the day, you were entered in a drawing for a prize. So we either will be giving away our Go Greek t-shirt for uh, this year or um, some very fancy beaver face masks um, to wear on campus. Um, so we'll give you details about how to pick those up um, and who the winners are at the end of the evening. Um, I already see some questions coming in, so that's great. Please use that Q&A feature throughout the presentation and we'll answer those questions at the end. And if you have any trouble with Zoom, feel free to use the chat function and JP and I will be monitoring that uh, to assist you. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to our students to take it away with the presentation. Thank you again so much for being here. Hello, my name is Stephanie and I am the president of the Multicultural Greek Council or MGC. I am a senior studying architectural engineering and I'm originally from Albuquerque, New Mexico. You'll get to hear from four other students today and as they speak, we'll each share an introduction. You can learn more about our community from our 2020-2021 publication on the website, and we'll also post a link to the publication in the chat. This publication covers general information about the community and joining processes, along with listing each of our recognized chapters on campus. Know that Fraternity and Sorority Life has a rich legacy at OSU. The community has been established for over 138 years, as we were established in 1882. 16% of the total undergraduate student body at OSU are fraternity and sorority members, which comes out to almost 3,000 men and women of undergraduate student, undergraduate student population. We currently have 45 chapters at Oregon State University and our community continues to grow more each year. 
There's a wealth of information on our website, so go to oregonstate.edu slash CSSL to view frequently asked questions, learn about joining, and to see chapter profiles for each of our groups. Also on the website are a number of videos that we encourage you to check out. There are videos from each council that share more about the member experiences, recording of live frequently asked questions where you can learn more about each council, and recording of our full Go Beeves, Go Greeks presentation that gives an in-depth overview of our communities, histories, values, and chapters. Hi everyone, my name is Alex and I'm the Vice President of Recruitment for the Panhellenic Council. I'm a senior studying English and I'm coming to you tonight from my hometown of Tualatin, Oregon, just outside of Portland. Um, we now want to share the six shared values of OSU fraternity and sorority life. Our values shape our community's programs and are important pillars of our Greek experience. Since academics are the main reason we are here at Oregon State, scholarship is our first value. Each chapter has GPA requirements to join as well as to remain in good standing as a member. National statistics show that fraternity and sorority members have a higher rate of graduation as compared to those students not involved on campus. Our next two values are philanthropy and community service. Every chapter was founded on principles of service to others and focuses on giving back to the community. Last year we raised over 70, we contributed over 70,000 hours of direct service to local organizations and donated over $360,000 to various local and national nonprofit and charities. Next we have leadership. Within a chapter, there are a number of officer positions that members can hold, as well as opportunities to get involved as a new member. The broader Greek community also has chances to get involved in leadership roles, and we find our members are highly active in other student groups on campus, such as student government, student media, athletics, and more. And of course, brotherhood and sisterhood are a cornerstone of Greek organizations. Having a group of people to support you can make the college experience so much more rewarding. We often say that our community is a home away from home, and we know that students want to find their place to belong. We have a diversity of chapter offerings, and we believe we have a place for everyone. Our final and perhaps most important community value is inclusivity. We work to foster an inclusive environment by promoting the fair treatment of all members and to create opportunities for students of all backgrounds and identities to join our chapters. Hello, my name is Jasmine and I'm the VP of Public Relations for the Collective Greek Council or CGC. I'm a senior studying human development and family science and I'm originally from Lake Los Angeles, California. Now to the main reason I'm sure you all signed up for this info session. How do you join our community? We'll be, providing, we'll be providing a short introduction to each council and their plans for virtual recruitment this fall. I'll start with the Collective Greek Council. I'm going to start with the information for the CGC, which is a special and unique part of our OSU community. CGC chapters are groups that have various academic and interest based for their memberships and are generally connected to one of the academic colleges or majors at OSU. We currently have four CGC chapters that each have their own distinct identity, one engineering-based sorority, one design-based sorority, one science-based sorority, and one agricultural-based sorority. Two of these organizations are local chapters and were founded at OSU and remain the only chapters of their organization. Our largest chapters have 60 members and our smallest has about 30. The average size of our chapters are roughly 50 members. None of our CGC chapters have chapter facilities, but they are strongly connected to colleges and departments and often meet in buildings where members have the majority of their classes, which can vary from chapter to chapter. Our members are often involved as leaders in student organizations and are highly engaged as college ambassadors, giving tours and meeting with incoming students. You have likely met a member of one of our chapters and welcome activities for your college. If you're in the College of Business, Science, Agricultural Science, or Engineering, as these are the colleges where our chapters are most involved. Now, let me tell you how you can get to know CGC a little bit better. CGC is hosting a meet and greet tomorrow, September 24th at 5 p.m. via an online system called Remo. This is a great chance to meet our chapters and learn more about how you can join. You can RSVP for our meet and greet using the link that we've dropped in the chat. RSVPing is not required, but we'll be sending out information how you can, how you can attend our event to that email list later tonight. You can also follow us on social media accounts at Collective Greek Council underscore OSU to find the event link. At the meet and greet, you will be able to meet 
with members from all of our chapters to learn more about their chapter and their joining process. We'll also be sharing, we'll also be having short presentations during this event where each chapter will share their recruitment plans. This is a great opportunity to, opportunity to ask chapters questions about their membership experience and decide if CGC chapters is the right fit for you. Additionally, throughout the event, we'll be giving away some prizes. So attendees, be sure to stay for the entirety of the event for a chance to win. Keep in mind that the meet and greet is just the first step in joining a CGC chapter. You'll need to contact your you'll need to contact the chapter you're interested in to learn more about how to participate in their independent recruitment process. So outside of the event tomorrow, keep an eye out for social media posts, announcements in your classes, and see your email for updates about when these events will occur. Generally, CGC chapters will have about have one to two weeks of events. Then then they will extend invitation for membership before beginning the new member process. We hope to see you at our meet and greet tomorrow and our chapters are so excited to meet you. Hi again. So as the president of the Multicultural Greek Council, I'll be giving an overview of MGC. So the Multicultural Greek Council serves members of multicultural fraternities and sororities, including Latine or Latinx, Asian interests and Native American based chapters. While each of our group have an affinity that is connected to their founding, each also strongly connects to a multicultural identity. And we currently have three Latino Latina chapters, which are Kappa Delta Chi, Omega Delta Phi, and Gamma Alpha Omega. One South Asian fraternity, Sigma Beta Rho. One Native American sorority, Alpha Pi Omega. And coming to campus this fall, we have Lambda Phi Epsilon, which is an Asian interest fraternity. And none of our multicultural groups have chapter houses, but we often meet at one of our cultural and resource centers on campus, such as the Native American Longhouse, the Asian and Pacific Cultural Center, and more. Our councils have a strong connect, our council has a strong connection to social justice principles, and you don't have to identify as a member of a certain cultural group to join one of our chapters. All are welcome and encouraged to explore what our chapters have to offer. Hello everyone, my name is Marquise and I'm the representative from the National Panhellenic Council. I'm a senior studying nuclear science and engineering and I'm originally from San Diego, California. The National Panhellenic Council, commonly referred to as the Divine Nine, encompasses the historically African American fraternities and sororities. Both fraternities and sororities make up membership within the NPHC. Currently there are three NPHC chapters at Oregon State University two fraternities being Phi Beta Sigma and Kappa Alpha Psi fraternities, and one MPAC sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority incorporated. We have five additional chap chapters that are chartered at OSU, but currently do not have any members. We're always looking to grow and there's opportunities to join these inactive chapters. If you have any questions, please refer to the information in the publication on our website, or you can contact the CFSL directly to learn more and one of the staff will assist. None of the NPAC chapters have facilities, but often meet in the Lonnie B. Harris Black Cultural Center here on campus, affectionately called the BCC for short. This is the place where many of our chapters have events and where you can find members um, hanging out throughout classes. All right, coming back to it. Um, be, becoming a part of any MGC or MPAC chapter is slightly different and that process is called membership intake. If you are interested in joining a multicultural Greek council chapter or national Panhellenic council chapter, the best way to get involved is by attending as many council sponsored events as you can. Also, don't be a stranger. Each individual MGC and NPHC organization also hosts various programs and activities on campus. By attending these programs and activities, you can introduce yourself to members of the fraternity or sorority that you're interested in and let them know that you'd like to learn more about their organization. Another good way to learn more about our organizations would be to consult the internet. There's a wealth of knowledge of the, on the internet about fraternities and sororities, all MGC and NPHC organizations have a national website where you can learn tons of information on each organization as a whole. Each chapter will hold their own membership intake process. And as a general rule, several MGC and all NPHC organizations do not accept students who don't have an established GPA OSU. 
but it's always best to check with the individual, individual chapters about their own intake process and joining requirements. If you're particularly interested in joining an MGC or an NPHC chapter, remember to stay focused on your studies and maintain a good GPA. That'll make sure you're eligible for membership. And just like the MPHC, sorry, the MGC, the MPHC is welcoming to students from all backgrounds across all cultures, um, all inclusive. And with that, we would like to invite you to attend our MPHC informational and trivia night that will be hosted on September 29th at 7 p.m. via Zoom. It is a free program and is an opportunity for you to hear about each MPHC fraternity and sorority. So all nine, um, the five fraternities and four sororities, as well as ask any questions that you may have to individual chapters. There'll be members there from each of our chapters. Um, the RSVP link should be on your screen there below. Be sure to fill it out so you can get in. Uh, we'll have lots of prizes um, and it's just a great opportunity to learn about our Greek community holistically. Awesome, thank you, Keith. Um, MGC will also be hosting a meet and greet on September 30th um, at 6 p.m. You can meet members from MGC chapters and learn more about joining. We cannot wait to meet you, so be sure to RSVP to attend. Um, our link is on our website as well as it'll be in the chat. Um, something that you can expect when you come um, is learning about the background of the multicultural organizations and hearing your presentation from each of our chapters. Um, you'll participate in virtual activities and games with current members, and you can put your knowledge to the test at the end with a trivia quiz, which you'll have a chance of winning a Go Greek t-shirt at. All right, thank you guys. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Bennett, and I'm the Vice President of Recruitment Programming for the Interfraternity Council. Uh, I'm a junior studying business administration, and I'm originally from Napa, California. Uh, now we're going to introduce each community and governing council, and we'll start with the Interfraternity Council, or IFC. Uh, the IFC is a fraternity-only governing body for the traditionally housed fraternities here on campus. The IFC has 22 chapters, and all recognized chapters are listed in the publication. Uh, 17 of our 22 chapters have chapter houses, so there are also unhoused options uh, for students as well. If you're interested in joining one of our 22 IFC chapters, then I really encourage you guys to first look through the Sia Basel publication. Uh, it has information on all chapters as well as contact information for each recruitment chair. Uh, you guys are definitely encouraged to reach out directly to chapters that you're interested in. I know they would love to hear from you. And uh, just moving on now, the IFC fall recruitment process will take place between September 27th and October 5th. Uh, for the first time this year, registration is required in order to join, but participation remains free. Uh, we're going to include the registration link for IFC recruitment in the chat right now, as well as a few other links for our upcoming events. So just giving you a brief overview of what to expect during IFC recruitment, our first day of events is Sunday, September 27th, and our IFC hosted events uh, will last those two days. The final process will close on Monday, October 5th on Jump Day. Um, on Sunday, September 27th at 6 p.m., our first event, we're going to be hosting an orientation webinar for any student joining, interested in joining an IFC fraternity. Uh, the link to register for the webinar is now in the chat. We definitely encourage you guys to attend so that you guys can learn more and ask any other questions you have about IFC recruitment and our virtual process specifically. Uh, basically, this webinar should give you all the tools that you guys need to have a successful IFC recruitment process. Uh, following that, the next day on Monday, September 28th, from 5.30 to 8 p.m., the IFC will be hosting a fraternity fair on Remo. Uh, this is a great online platform that will help you guys interact with chapters, basically a huge uh, ballroom floor that you guys can move virtually from table to table. I know all of our chapters are really excited to see you guys there. Uh, it's definitely a great chance to get to know all of our 22 IFC chapters and some chapters, hopefully, from MGC and MPHC. You can then narrow down the chapters that you wish to visit again. Uh, you can get all of that information to join the fair on our website, or also I would recommend looking at our Instagram handle. Uh, and our link, The link in our bio on our, on our Instagram does have all of the sign-up links uh, that you need for registration, our orientation, and then also our fraternity fair. So make sure to get on that and sign up ASAP. Uh, following those two days of IFC hosted events, 
from September 29th through October 4th. Chapters will be hosting their own individual events for all interested men to attend. All events will be held virtually this year and information about these events will be sent to everyone registered and posted on IFC's website and social media. Uh, here's what you guys can expect from these events. Uh, basically, Chapters will be hosting a bunch of watch parties for sporting events, lots of chances to play video games, connect with members, uh, learn more about each individual organization and more. Generally, by October 4th, all chapters will have extended bids to the interested students, and men will have accepted the bid from the chapter they want to join. And finally, on October 5th, we're going to finish off the IFC fall recruitment process with a virtual jump day alternative. Uh, look forward to that. It's going to be a celebration of everyone who has decided to join an IFC chapter this fall. And once again, our process is free and you can sign up today. Registration is required, but again, it is free. Um, outside of fall recruitment, IFC chapters do continue to hold informal recruitment events throughout the year. So if you decide to go through IFC recruitment and don't find what you're looking for at first in the summer or fall, there's still definitely a chance to get to know our chapters throughout the year. So with that being said, we hope to see you at some events and I'm going to turn it over to Alex to talk about Panhellenic. Thanks, Bennett. Um, Panhellenic is a sorority-only governing council for our traditionally housed sororities on campus. We currently have 11 Panhellenic chapters at Oregon State and all are housed. If you're interested in joining one of our 11 Panhellenic sororities on campus, I encourage you to sign up and participate in fall formal recruitment. Formal recruitment will take place this fall, beginning Tuesday, September 29th, with potential new member orientation via Zoom. Events will begin Wednesday, September 30th, and end Tuesday, October 6th with bid day. Panhellenic recruitment will take place virtually this year. Chapters and potential new members will connect via Zoom throughout the week. To give you an idea of what to expect, I'll give an overview of each step of our virtual process. First, be sure you're registered for recruitment. The link is in the chat now, so you can sign up and start to get all the details for participating. On Tuesday, September 29th, potential new member orientation will be held as a webinar that will cover important details you need to know to join a Panhellenic chapter. We will review our new virtual experience as well as what to expect. On Wednesday, September 30th and Thursday, October 1st, participants will meet with their Gamma Chi or recruitment counselor virtually and watch videos about our chapters so that they can get to know them better. This is called round one or open house. On Friday, October 2nd and Saturday, October 3rd, our round two or philanthropy round will occur, which includes a chance to learn more about our chapter's commitment to service and philanthropy, as well as time to talk in small groups um, on Zoom with chapters. On Sunday, October 4th, our round three or chapter day will take place, which is a chance to drive, dive deeper into understanding what sisterhood is like, as well as the membership experience. Monday, October 5th is our final round called preference round. This is the time to learn more about the ritual and deep connections members share. Finally, we end with our virtual bid day, Tuesday, October 6th, where participants get a bid from their forever home. We utilize a mutual selection process during formal recruitment. This means you will narrow down your choices as the chapters are also narrowing down the women they would like to invite back. Remember, fall formal recruitment is the only opportunity to check out all 11 Panhellenic chapters. Many of our chapters will be full following fall recruitment for the rest of the academic year. You can sign up for fall formal recruitment online using a credit card at any time until Monday, September 28th at noon. Registration is currently $50, but we're running a first day of school special and the fee is now only $30. Be sure to register before midnight to take advantage of this great prize. Thank you, Alex. And once again, all of the dates for our different joining processes are now up on the screen. Uh, more info in the RSVP or registration forms for each of our joining processes are located in the publication and can be found on our website. Uh, you can also find the registration links for our live Q&A sessions on the website as well. Uh, we definitely want you guys to stay updated on everything fraternity and sorority life, so check us out on social media at OSU Greeks. Uh, in the publication online, you'll also find the social media accounts for all of five of our councils. Uh, here is our contact information, so if you have any questions that come to you after today, please feel free to reach out. 
And again, thank you to all in attendance. Remember to check out the CFSO website for lots of info on our community and resources on how to join. Uh, at this point, I'm gonna send it back to Kelsey, uh, who will talk about our giveaway and our prizes. Thanks so much, Bennett. And thank you all for sharing information about your um, council's processes. So our folks that registered for this webinar um, before midnight last night were entered in a drawing for some prizes. Um, so really excited to announce the winners. Your names will appear on the screen here. Great. So for the Go Greek shirt, we have um, those five winners there and face masks, another five. Um, so I will be reaching out to you via the um, email address you used to register um, to coordinate a pickup of your prizes um, once they're available on campus for you. So that will require coming onto campus to pick them up. If that is an issue in any way, please let me know when I contact you uh, about the pickup and we can we can coordinate something. But thank you all so much for um, registering in advance and um, hope these are some fun goodies to welcome you to the community. All right, so next up is the question and answer portion. But before we get to there, I just want to share the contact information for all of our um, lovely council reps who um, shared information tonight. If you have any questions about their um, council's recruitment process or want to know more about their experience as an um, undergraduate member of a chapter, please reach out to them uh, via those email addresses. Uh, they'll be happy to connect with you and answer more. And if you're unsure of where to go, you're always welcome to contact the CFSL at cfsl at oregonstate.edu and we're happy to point you in the right direction. All right, so um, to get going with some questions, um, I'm going to start off first. Could um, I have Stephanie share a little bit about what the time commitment is like um, joining a fraternity or sorority? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think like with, it's really about kind of what you put in is what you get out. And it's like, you know, the energy that you want to put in and how involved you want to be really just depends on the level of engagement that you want back. Um, but at the end of the day, regardless, um, a lot of chapters have weekly meetings and um, require you to do other different events and workshops. So you can be looking about three to five hours um, per week for just their chapter. And then again, there's lots of opportunities that you can be more involved in and a lot more time to those things. Um, but definitely, I, I highly recommend just being really excited and engaged. And I think you receive a lot of that same um, energy back from your chapters and the community. Great, thank you so much. All right, does anyone else wanna add anything to that question? Nope, that's okay. Um, moving on to an, uh, another question from the audience. Um, how do we know when certain fraternities are going to have um, opportunities to meet interested students. So I could I have each council that has fraternities um, as part of your council answer that question? Yeah, thank you, Kelsey. I'll go ahead and start that off. So uh, first of all, it is worth mentioning that our events this year will be completely virtual. Uh, so there won't be in-person meetups uh, this fall. Uh, but the best way to figure that, that out, at least for IFC, uh, would either be through our graphic depicting all of the chapter events, uh, which will be released in the coming days, uh, or by just contacting individual chapters that you want to meet with individually. Uh, definitely connect with their social medias, with our social medias, uh, their recruitment flyers and their schedules will be posted all over there. So definitely just look either uh, at their social media, at our social media, or also on the IFC website for more info on that. I will go next. Um, so speaking on behalf of the National Panel and the Council, um, there's a couple ways. Um, you can reach out to, um, of course, JP, Kelsey, and or, and or Leslie at the CFSL um, to learn more about the NPHC chapters and um, what the recruitment processes are looking like. Um, different chapters have different intake periods and there's the social media pages, um, the OSU NPHC um, Instagram page, where we have all of our chapters and you can see what events are going on there. Um, 
and uh, the CFSL as well would have uh, personal email addresses for the chapters if you wanted to reach out to a chapter directly, ask them any questions that you may have or whatnot. Yes, and for MGC, just to reiterate what um, Bennett had said was um, all of our events will be virtual. Uh, our fraternity events will be virtual and the best place to meet at first is to come to the meet and greet and make those connections. And then as well as the um, social media aspect, once you kind of are interested in a fraternity, look at their Instagram, just reach out. They are always happy to talk to people who are interested and MGC chapters recruit year round. So if fall doesn't look like it's gonna work out for you, are you thinking of doing another term? Um, always just keeping those connections is really important too. So that social media, just reaching out, saying hi, everyone will be super excited to talk to you and answer que any questions that you have, as well as the CFSL being a really great resource for all of those um, emails and direct contact for specific questions. Thank you very much, everyone. All right, keep those questions coming into the Q&A. Don't be shy. Um, this is your opportunity to hear straight from um, our uh, members. So I have a question here of, um, I'm living on campus fall term, but do not have a living option after this term. How can I get more connected to sorority options? So I'm gonna pass this on to Alex, um, since our Panhellenic chapters are um, only housed sororities. Yeah, so um, all of our 11 Panhellenic chapters have um, chapter facilities. Um, we have um, something called the Affiliated Housing Program. So a few students can apply um, and they allow new students to move in. However, with um, due to like coronavirus and concerns for safety of members, um, the Affiliated Housing Program is on a little bit of a pause. Um, so if Kelsey wants to elaborate a little bit more on that, um, <laughs> that um, that's really the only option if you're looking to move into your um, chapter's facility during your first year of membership. And I'll hand it off to Kelsey to explain a little bit further. <laughs> you did a great job, but I'm happy to elaborate a little bit more. Um, so the Affiliated Housing Program is a program at the university that allows chapters that have facilities um, to have first year students um, who normally would be bound by the first year live on requirement to move into their chapter facilities. Um, but with coronavirus, a lot of our chapters um, have very much limited their um, living capacities um, to ensure that they're um, physically distancing um, and uh, to help ke um, keep up with cleaning regimens, that sort of thing. Uh, so that's a really great question to ask during recruitment about if there are opportunities to move into the chapter facility um, after fall term, because right now that's sort of on a chapter by chapter um, basis. Um, and that's also something we can talk more with you um, about one-on-one -on -one if you have um, additional questions. Thank you so much. All right, and then we have um, another question of will there be any in-person recruitment activities this year? Um, and I think it's been um, shared a number of times throughout this presentation. All of our council's recruitment activities this year are 100% virtual. Um, and the, the councils have committed to following OSU's physical distancing and in-person gathering policies, uh, which you can read about more on OSU's um, website. And so there, there may be small gatherings of students wearing face coverings under 10 people and um, physically distancing up to six feet. Uh, so there, there may be small opportunities, but for the most part, everything will be virtual and online so that everyone can remain safe and healthy uh, this fall term. And if you have um, questions about a specific council's um, virtual process or what opportunities there are to engage in person with members, recommend reaching out to the folks that um, their contact information is on the screen here. All right, so just a couple more questions. Um, is what are the benefits of joining a fraternity or sorority? Isn't it just a social club? So I'm going to turn this over um, to Jasmine to answer. Awesome. Thank you, Kelsey. So there's a lot of benefits for um, joining a fraternity or sorority. It's not just about the social connection, but we do pride ourselves on having that social connection, having that experience that um, many members want as they can connect and kind of grow in, with friendship and develop long lasting um, connections with people for a lifetime. But other opportunities are leadership opportunities. You have academic support 
and you have a focus on with your community on service and philanthropy. So I know definitely from my personal experience, um, joining a sorority has really helped my academics. It's um, allowed me to um, have study groups with my sisters and be able to kind of connect with ladies that know different um, resources on campus on campus that can help me um, kind of uh, grow within my academics, but also um, leadership opportunities are definitely a big thing. Um, without a sorority, without joining a um, sorority, I wouldn't be here today uh, talking to everyone. So I really appreciate what they've been able to do for me on those aspects. But um, really, it it is um, a great place to have a social connection. But you do have a lot of leadership in academic and um, uh, service and philanthropy opportunities as well. So if anybody else wants to answer that question, um, yeah. It's Kelsey, can you please repeat the question? Yeah, so what are the benefits for joining a fraternity or sorority? Isn't it just um, a chance to socialize? So, yes, the, there's the obvious, it is a, it's a chance to socialize. There's also the um, bigger question that comes a point of personal re, um, responsibility or interest of why are you yourself looking to join a fraternity or sorority? What are you looking to get out of it? Are you looking for solely the social connections? Because that's definitely there. Are you looking for opportunities to get involved in philanthropies and community service? Because that's been expressed already. Those opportunities are definitely there as well. Um, I can speak on my personal experience. Um, I call it a home away from home. I moved up to Oregon um, all by myself, no family members or whatnot, or any family friends. And um, by joining my fraternity, I was connected to a brotherhood and a sisterhood of collegiate members and also alumni members who um, treat me just like family, like we're all just brothers and sisters on the same level. Um, so you're really just asking yourself, what are you looking to get out of joining a fraternity and sorority would be a great key in moving forward in the process. Awesome, thank you so much for those responses. It really shows the, the wide array of reasons to join a fraternity and sorority. Um, along that vein, also a question we get a lot from students is, how do you decide um, what type of experience is the right one for me? So there's five different councils. How do I choose which recruitment process to go through? Um, so could I have someone give some insight um, on to how to make that decision or um, how to narrow down those options? Yeah, I can go ahead and answer that. Um, just by being here today, you've already made a great step. Uh, you've heard from each of our councils and definitely know what each of them are about. Uh, aside from that, I would definitely make sure to go and look on our website. Uh, make sure to look at each chapter profile, uh, each of our uh, different council profiles and just see what their values are, see what you think best fits you. Uh, you can definitely, if decide uh, whether you want a house experience, whether you want an unhouse experience, uh, whether you want your fraternity or sorority to be uh, in relation to your major. Uh, those are all important things to consider. And really just uh, do your research, be proactive, reach out to chapters. Uh, I think that's the best advice that I could give. Awesome, thank you so much. Anyone have anything they wanna add? Any other pieces of advice? Uh, yeah, I'd like to add. Um, I think definitely just, again, as Ben is saying, um, looking at their values and knowing that this experience is it's for life. So um, you really want to join something that you know you wholeheartedly believe in and you think will be a really positive impact for yourself and really weigh out uh, what it is that you want, whether that be to live in a chapter facility or just to continue living in your own personal um, house or if you'd like to you know, do something with maybe different traditions, such as like NPHC or MGC, um, the traditions that are very different or have you know, more unique traditions, such as like strolling or new member presentations. And of course, like um, CGC and um, THC and IFC all have different traditions. So just kind of investigating and really seeing um, where you feel like you fit and you belong. And there is a guaranteed a place for you <laughs> um, on our campus. Awesome, thank you so much. Those are great and I hope it helps uh, folks think about some questions to ask during their recruitment process. 
Uh, and also it's okay to explore multiple councils. So if you're unsure of what council may be the right fit for you, um, you're welcome to attend multiple events, um, RSVP for multiple events and um, get to know the chapters and hear more about what the member experience is like before making a decision. All right, another question, um, how much um, is, does membership cost? How much does it cost to join? Can we get a response from each council just sort of a little quick overview of what membership fees look like. I'll start us off. So for the Collective Greek Council, our dues and um, kind of cost to join can be anywhere from $85 to $185. But as a new member, you typically pay a little bit no more for your first term um, joining your um, joining the chapter as it just kind of covers some new membership fees such as pins, plaques, uh, different um, um, trying to find the right word, different materials that um, you might need to um, for your, um, to try to find the right word for this, but different materials you might need for your um, whole sorority experience um, within our um, chapters. And, but that is a one-time fee that usually that they um, ask at the beginning of your first uh, term within the organization. But other than that, our um, dues are, are lower. They're, yeah, they're on average a little bit lower than the first term, so. I guess I, I can go next. Um, for the MPHC, there is a varying range between the um, nine organizations. Um, I believe it can range somewhere between seven, about $750. That includes an application fee, um, some initiation uh, fee, um, materials, again, that you get as joining as a new member, and kind of that first cost is higher. And then yearly memberships um, would be significantly less. Um, it varies organization to organization. So the range about 750 to, I believe about 2000. So somewhere in between that range, but each of the nine organizations has their own kind of set of um, membership dues. Um, I can go next for MGC, our chapters again, um, like MPHC and CGC, do you have um, the initiation dues or just that initial um, payment so that you can, again, get materials that you need, whether that be letters, um, other stuff for national um, recognition, other things like that. And then um, for yearly, looking at about like 200 to 300 um, per like three terms. Thank you. And then uh, for IFC, so there are separate costs for living in a chapter facility and living out of a chapter facility. Uh, the average per term live in cost is about $2,400 and the average live out cost per term is about $400. Uh, definitely keep in mind when you're thinking about these costs that the live in cost uh, does include all amenities and for most of our house chapters, they do also have meals provided. Uh, so you will be getting lunch and dinner included with that. Uh, definitely a good thing to reach out uh, because individual chapters do vary. Uh, but just to give you a range, it's about 2400 and 400 respectively. And I'll finish with Panhellenic. Um, so there is um, a cost to participate in our recruitment process, um, which is $50. And then um, usually your first year of membership, you can expect um, $1,200 to maybe $1,500 for new member fees. Um, and then when you live in the chapter house, um, it's somewhere around like um, eight to nine thousand dollars to live in the chapter house, but um, it sounds like a lot. It's split up over terms, and it's actually cheaper um, most of the time to live in a chapter facility than to live off campus or on campus, um, just because all of your amenities are included in that cost that you're paying to live in the chapter facility, as well as um, yeah. So all of your meals are provided. Um, and um, things like laundry, um, all of that stuff is included in that cost. So you don't have to pay any additional fees. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate that. And um, information about the financial aspect of joining a fraternity and sorority can also be found in our publication. We include a membership fee range for each of our councils on their um, council pages in that publication. Um, all right, so to, to wrap us up tonight, 
I'm going to do one more round robin question um, of just have each student give us one piece of advice that they would give to um, students who are interested in um, going through a recruitment or membership intake process. So what is one piece of advice you have uh, for those joining us tonight? Yeah, I'll go ahead and answer that uh, real quick. My biggest piece of advice uh, is for this applies to any council, but it's definitely be proactive. Uh, any chapter would be very excited to talk to uh, any potential new member. So definitely take initiative, reach out, uh, follow our chapter accounts on social media, get their contact info, and definitely take it upon yourself. Um, yeah, that's I think the best advice I could give. I'll go next. Um, the best piece of advice I could give is be yourself, kind of stay true to who you are, what your values are, and don't really um, try to alter those as it's really just about kind of um, showing what you value and show um, kind of care about the most and we'll love to talk to you and get to know you more and more. And so yeah, just kind of stay true to yourself. I'll go next. Um, I think adding off of that, the most important thing um, when you're considering joining the Greek community is to be open minded. Um, so one process might not be like the process for you or the experience for you. But that doesn't mean that there isn't another experience that's right for you within our community. So just be open minded. Um, see everything we have to offer because we have so much to offer. We really do have a place for everyone. Um, so yeah, keep your mind open and explore your options. Okay, my turn. Um, one piece of advice that I have is just take your time when navigating, um, just going through a process or just looking for a council to join, um, first of all, and then getting more deep into the, a specific organization and whatnot. It may not be the hardest decision of your life, or it may be the easiest decision of your life, but just make sure that it's well thought out, that you've kind of weighed the options and you really just ask yourself that question, am I ready to move forward? And if you can say that confidently, then go ahead and green light. Uh, my piece of advice would be to push yourself out of your comfort zone sometimes. Um, I think that is what really helped me get to know a lot of um, different chapters and people and just in general to kind of see where I, I felt like I really found my home at and that's where it all started. I just put myself in just that way of like, I would like to meet new people and it may not be like something where I, I feel like super, super comfortable, but like pushing myself out there and just having and being myself really helped to determine where I kind of really wanted to be. Thank you all so much for those great pieces of advice. Um, warmed my heart to hear them. So thank you all again so much for being here with us tonight. We hope we answered your questions and um, gave you some action items to RSVP or register for these events coming up because uh, we really hope that we get to see you um, at these events. Uh, but thank you again so much. We really enjoyed having you here tonight. And if you have any questions that come up after the fact, please don't hesitate to reach out to us either through those email addresses uh, for the different council uh, representatives or at um, the CFSL email, cfsl at oregonstate.edu. Um, so that is all we have for you tonight. Um, hope you had a great first day of term and that um, your first week goes really well. Uh, but have a great night and go beefs, go Greek. Thank you all so much. Bye.